James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today's June 17th, 2020. It's about noon central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world, folks. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and ring that bell for critical future updates. Folks, today's video will be the most important video you see in your entire life. We're going to cover the coming annular solar eclipse that happens on the solstice this year in 2020. That's going to be June 21st, the same day we decided that the Mayan calendar may predict the end or change of the world. Folks, we're also having 14 days later a lunar eclipse. What's strange about the lunar eclipse is this happens on the day of the full moon, July 5th, 2020. Folks, this is going to be completely mind-blowing. We're going to go into a Simpsons episode, and I Pet Goat 2, and we're going to show how both of these predicted exactly what's going to happen over the next three to four weeks and what this all means to everyone in the world. A production co a company called Helifant produced I Pet Goat 2 in 2009, and this movie is known as one of the most predictive features in all of history. Please notice that the O in Heliphant is actually an annular solar eclipse. And folks, you're going to wonder what this dot is here to the top left of that annular solar eclipse. Well, we're going to discuss that later in the video. But remember, this is the first and only video movie produced by Heliphant. Nothing else has come from them. And it is highly predictive of the events to come. Folks, get ready to witness an annular solar eclipse on June 21st, 2020. This time it becomes an extra special event as it happens to be on the June 2020 solstice, the longest day of the year. According to timeanddate.com, the eclipse will be from 9.15 a.m., and will end about 3.04 p.m. on June 21st. These times will vary depending on where you are in the world, folks, but I'm going to go over timing later in this video. The full eclipse is supposed to start around 10.17 a.m. The maximum eclipse will occur around 12.10 p.m. According to media reports, the eclipse will be visible from parts of Africa, Pakistan, North India, China, etc. As you know, a solar eclipse occurs when the sun, moon, and earth are aligned in such a manner that the moon passes between the sun and earth and blocks the sunlight. It can be both partial or total. The moon casts a shadow on earth, and as the earth rotates, it creates a trail, which is called the path of totality. And only in this path will you experience total darkness during this eclipse. What is an annular solar eclipse, folks? An annular solar eclipse happens when the sun and moon are exactly in line with the earth, but the moon is too far away from the sun to completely cover the sun, and it casts a ring around the moon. Folks, this is called an annulus, the bright ring that you will see casts around the moon just like we saw in the hell of font productions name folks this is also called the ring of fire unlike lunar eclipses that we are going to discuss in this video and we will be having on july 5th july 4th 2020 exactly two weeks after this annual solar eclipse it is very dangerous to see a solar eclipse with the naked eyes. We will take a look at that information in I Pet Goat 2 and in a Simpsons episode, both from 2009, folks. Looking at the sun directly can destroy the cells in the retina, causing retina burns. They're also known as eclipse blindness or solar repinopathy. Symptoms include loss of vision and distorted vision due to a blind spot. It's always advisable. To protect your eyes while trying to view any type of solar eclipse, but not lunar eclipses, folks. We're going to go into the facts and learn more right now. What you're seeing in front of you now, folks, is a scene from I Pet Goat 2. And I want to show you what's so interesting about this scene. There are 12 children surrounding the girl here. And her head is directly in between the sixth child at around the 21st day 
and the seventh child at around the fifth day. That alone is amazing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve months of the year, folks. Let's continue. Notice the ring that is set forth around the girl. Folks, this is actually predicting this annular solar eclipse in 2020. There's more, folks. You can barely see this little dot here, just like in Hillefont Productions' actual name. What is this dot? Folks, I believe that this could be our second sun as 90% of all solar systems or dual solar or dual sun solar systems. This also could be a planet that's viewable during this annular solar eclipse. But we're going to go into much more information about this as we go here, folks. Please stay with us. If I do make mistakes, I've been setting this up for days. We're going to continue because time is short, okay? Exactly 14 days from that annular solar eclipse that happens on the solstice will have a lunar eclipse, folks. This happens to occur on the full moon, which we will soon prove to you. You can see that that lunar eclipse actually covers all of North America and most of South America and is visible from many spots around the globe. Again, occurring 14 days. Remember that number because we're going to look at a Simpsons episode where that will be important. This will actually occur on July 5th, but in the United States, it will be visible at around 1139 July 4th in the evening of our Independence Day, folks. Here you can see a calendar of the actual months and moons in 2020. If we move to July and move down to the 5th, you'll see that the 100% full moon occurs on the 5th, the same day as this lunar eclipse. This is very significant. We have a annular solar eclipse on the solstice followed directly by a lunar eclipse on the full moon two weeks later. Keep all this in mind, folks. Before going into this predictive Simpsons episode, I'd like to discuss the biblical terms of this annular solar eclipse, which really biblically means that God is angry. It shows God's anger for humans and what they're doing on earth. What does a lunar eclipse mean, folks? Biblically, it is supposed to mean that people on earth are grounded or realize exactly what's going on. So, folks, let's continue and take a look at this 2009 Simpsons episode. Please notice that both I Pet Goat 2 and this Simpsons episode were both made in 2009, and both of them actually feature this exact annular solar eclipse. A bit of a spoiler as we go on, folks. This is Marge Simpson after she looked at a solar eclipse, and she's actually blind for exactly two weeks. This is the two weeks in between the solar eclipse and the rise of the Antichrist, folks. Folks, we're going to go into Gone Maggie Gone, an episode of The Simpsons that was actually aired first in March 15, 2009. And it was written by Billy Kimball and Ein Maxstone Graham. I believe that they are both, both Freemasons. It was directed by Chris Clemson. Folks, in the episode, Homer leaves Maggie on the doorstep of a covenant after having a car accident. But when she disappears, Lisa goes undercover as a nun to solve the mystery and find her. Meanwhile, Homer tries to keep Maggie's disappearance a secret from Marge, who was temporarily blinded while watching a solar eclipse. As you'll see for 14 days, folks, he is actually pretending like, this is Maggie right here, and you can see that Marge is blinded temporarily from this solar eclipse that she had to look at. Let's continue, folks. We're going to cover this Simpsons episode as quickly as possible so we can get back to more symbolism in I Go To and what the probable occurrences and events will be over the next three to four weeks. 
and we go on. The Simpsons are excited for a solar eclipse over Springfield. As the family expresses delight at seeing the eclipse, Marge takes a peek. It blinds her. Dr. Hilbert informs her and the family that Marge's eyes must be covered for exactly two weeks, and she n must not be put under any stress. After a rat infestation, like the one we're having in Seattle, Homer takes Maggie and Santa's little helper, the dog, to the store so he can get some rat poison. The bickering between the baby and the dog causes the family car to fall off the bridge on the way back home. Homer tries to get them all across the lake in a small boat. He first takes Maggie across and puts her on the doorstep of a covenant, while the nuns take Maggie in and then refuse to give her back to Homer. While Homer and Bart hide the truth from Marge about Maggie, Lisa goes undercover as a nun and infiltrates the covenant. When Mother Superior refuses to tell her where Maggie is, Lisa discovers that they are all seeking a jewel. Lisa's first clue is to seek God with heart and soul, which she correctly interprets as playing a few measures of song by the same name on the covenant's organ, activating a Rube Gold Goldberg contraption. She next is told to find the biggest man-made ring, the annular ring, folks, in Springfield. At first, she assumes in the episode that it is a circular ring, but she soon learns that the ring is Springfield's bell tower. Arriving there, she meets comic book guy and Principal Skinner, who tell her that St. Teresa of Ville had a deathbed vision of a jewel that would bring peace and harmony to the world, folks. Comic book guy tells her that a gem will reveal on the first full moon after a solar eclipse, which is that night. However, the bell is actually paper mache. So Lisa and comic book guy conclude that the biggest ring in Spring Springfield is really the ring in the Springfield sign, folks, which is really the ring on the annular eclipse, June 21st, 2020. At the Springfield sign, they're met with by Mr. Burns and Smithers. They're also looking for the gym. Lisa finds writing on the Springfield sign, unscrambles it wrongly, comes up with it thinking that she is the gym. Folks, it turns out when she returns to the actual covenant and exclaims that she is the gym, Mother Superior tells her that she has unscrambled the message wrong, and the message really says, it's really Maggie, Sherlock. Maggie is put on a throne, causing light to hit her, and makes a rainbow that brings peace all over Springfield. Marge, however, inexplicably bursts, bursts in, Take Mag takes Maggie back. Two weeks later, her eyes are healed upon seeing Maggie. She refuses to give up Maggie for peace of Springfield. On the way home, she asks Homer if she was being selfish. But he says that he found a replacement for Maggie. That was Bart. Bart assumes the role of the gym child. Due to the reflection of his unruly personality, he returns it into a living hell, folks. So Springfield turns into a living hell. Bart is the Antichrist that rises on or about July 5th, 2020. This date could also represent another false flag. Pet Goat 2 goes into Bar George Bush Jr. here the day of 9-11 at the school. This could also mean child sacrifice. Obama is the Antichrist as will be revealed right now. I Pet Goat 2 shows Obama at the same school, but not with a dunce hat on. He's laughing. Notice the floor, the Masonic checkerboard, folks. He is the Antichrist as revealed at this time. Folks, as the girl in I Pet Goat 2 drops the apple, it rolls up to where? Obama's shoe. This actually represents child sacrifice of the Antichrist. He will make his rise on or about. July 5th, 2020. Remember, folks, this was all predicted in 2009. The powers that be have known this to be fact. Please share this video. Please subscribe. God bless each and every one of y'all. Prepare, folks. Let's make this a new beginning, not our end. God bless each and every one of you.